the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. But to make a long story short, she passed away that July of 1999. And Rod Parsley was at Jensen Franklin's, not in the new church, but in the middle building. And uh, I said, my grand, I said to my brother Robin and my son Josh, I said, Granny wouldn't want us over here at the funeral home. He'd, she'd want us over at Jensen's shouting and prophesying and running and talking in tongues and just being a believer, a happy believer. And so we went over there, and it wasn't long till Pastor preached, Pastor Parsley preached on get ready or get left. And soon as he, he did not know me, but as soon as he said amen, I cut loose with the prophecy. Uh, Marcus Lamb was there with Daystar Uplink, and it was going all over the world, and, I, and you can get it. You can, go, you can go on YouTube and see, you need to hear that prophetic word to this country and to the world. Basically, I said, America, America. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Do not spurn my love. Do not run from my affection and my love. Something to that effect. Said America, America, I have loved you through your wars and through your depression and through your trials and through your tests. And yet... Listen to this. He wasn't speaking to everybody in America, but says, yet you have spit in my face the way you have treated me. As if someone that did not love you or, or did not care about you. Well, I'll tell you, it wasn't the true believers that caused that to be. It wasn't the pastors and churches that was preaching the truth that caused that to be. It was this thing of religion. Do you hear me? You know, let me just tell you this. Do you know a hog's got religion? He does the same thing every day. He, come on. He, you can hit on that trough and he'll come and eat. And then he'll waddle back to the mud hole. That's right. And he'll lay right there and, and just enjoy that mud hole till it come time to eat again. You will never get him out of his religion till you shoot him between the eyes. That's a fact. He'll never make bacon or sausage. Woo! You'll never eat how on the hog till you kill him. And that's exactly what religion does to people. Just a, a wore out old routine. No joy, can't change. Come on. Teaching tired, preaching sick. Come on. Come on. Are you listening to me? Find you a place in the preacher that's full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. That will put something in you. Amen. Make you chase sinners to get them to be saved. Let you love the devil out of your enemies and the people that persecute you. I don't know why I'm saying all this, but I'm talking to world changers. I'm talking to people who are wanting to change the world and make a difference. And if you're here this morning, Jesus loves you this, I know, because the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves us, this I know, because of what he's done for me. Oh, the meanest, sorriest kid that dad had was Milton Martin, Jr. Yes. Do you, do you understand? Always in rebellion, always stubborn. My goodness, we couldn't have a Thanksgiving or a Christmas or a birthday party or a family reunion that daddy didn't have to take me ring around the roses. I'm telling you. I mean, always resist in peace and love. But God had mercy on me. God wants to have mercy on you this morning, wherever you're from, wherever you're, whatever state or area you're listening um, to this and seeing this meeting, I want you to receive the love of Jesus. I want to talk with you this morning from my heart. And I am already, of course. But we thank you for being here. Expect a miracle. Turn to Psalms 103 with me and stand for just a moment. Now, 
Number one, I want to say again, there's only one God and he's a good God. Jehovah God. Hear me. And he only had one son. His name was Jesus Christ. He was Emmanuel according to Isaiah 9. He was God with us. Amen. And you're here this morning and watching this program, this great revival service. I can tell you, you and you that love Jesus, I do. Have a longing in your heart for him. You have a hole in your heart. You don't know how to fill it. But you need to fill it with almighty God and his son Jesus Christ. Through the person of the Holy Ghost. Hear me now. He wants to give you his best today. He wants to reveal his son Jesus God does to you. There's not many ways to God. There's only one way to God. Peter said in the book of Acts, there is no other name given among men whereby we might be saved but the name of Jesus. And I hope to make him through the spirit of God real to you today where you'll want him more than you ever have. Psalms 103 verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth? Look at me just a minute. Anytime you see that F, that E-T-H on the end of a word in the scripture, it means it is a continual gift. It is a continual operation. It is something that is continually given to you if you will ask and receive. Amen? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Listen to that. Did you just hear me? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? I know that Pastor Drew and, and, and Pastor Wanda are real excited about Brother Shambach. I, he, he's with Jesus now. He's one of the best. But he said they were, he was listening on the radio one day and he said there was a man came through that could, said he could had the power to turn your age back. He said, come on, mama, we're going to see him. <laughs> who, re, who renews your youth like the eagles. The Lord executed the righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. Listen. He hath, verse 10, he hath not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. And Micah said he has cast our sins, if we will believe it and accept it. All sins. Doesn't matter what kind of sin. He has cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness never to remember them anymore why amen amen the song says would you be free from your burden of sin there's power in the blood hey would you roar evil a victory win there's power in the blood there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know why we know he's God? You know why Jesus was the only uh, sacrifice that would redeem mankind to, from Adam to amen to the, to the rapture from their sins? Is because his blood was sinless. Do you hear me? And there has been no other person of a major religion died to save their people from their sins. What? What is his name? Jesus Christ did that. Amen. 
Would, hey, the Bible says in the book of Romans, would a good man die for another good man? But while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Jesus died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. Look, I'm trying to give you a picture of the Lord. Verse 13. For as, is, as a father pitieth his children, so will the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Listen, look, wait just a minute. You've got, look at everybody, look at me. You've got some people, now wait a minute, God hates evil. He hates evil. He hates sin, but he loves the sinner. This scripture didn't say as a father hates his children, so his father beats the hell out of them. You never heard that in your life, have you? But I want you to get this. We got some people out there that think that God is mean. God, do you hear me? He hates evil. He will chasten for sin, especially in those that claim his name and claim him as their father and claim Jesus as, as their savior. If you willfully sin, that he will chasten you. He will discipline you as a father disciplines in his children. Do you hear me? But it says, as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Listen, as for man, his days are like grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. But the wind passeth over it, and he is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. To such as keep his covenant and those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Father, thank you for anointing each and every heart with prevention grace. Draw them to the bleeding side of your loving, merciful Son, Jesus Christ, and save them by the blood of Jesus. Satan, God, uh, God is against you today. Satan, evil, God is against you. I'm against you. This church is against you. We come in behalf of everyone that's bound by alcohol, by drugs, drugs by by whatever oh god all perversion any evil of any kind we're against you satan the blood of jesus is against you satan the word of the living god is against you satan and evil but god loves the sinner come to him this day all of you that labor and are heavy laden and god will give you rest for your soul for his yoke His word, his life is easy, and his burden is light. We give you praise for embarrassing the devil. One more time in this house, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Turn to to somebody around you and tell them God's going to bless you today if you'll let him. Think of this. Think of this. Now, I'm not... I haven't said anything about the books on the table, but I've got a book out there, I mean an author out there by the name of A.W. Tozer. He, he, he's been dead since, six, I think, 63, 64, uh, 1963, 64, was a prophet of the Lord, a great man. Oh, just like Spurgeon, when somebody said, when you get a book other than the Bible, get Spurgeon. Get everything you can get on Charles Haddon Spurgeon. I say, when you can get anything on Tozier, get it. But I wanted to, you know, if these fellows can read off these telecompters, (laughs) amen, I'm reading off the Holy Ghost telecompter most of the time. Amen. 
but I wanted to share something with you that I, I just decided that I had to read it to you. And then we'll let the Holy Ghost comment. Listen to this. Listen to the title of my message for those that you don't know God. For those of you that's had a warped understanding of God, his son Jesus, and the work of the Holy Spirit in the earth today. Listen to this. God is easy to live with in this book called The Root of the Righteous. Tapping the bedrock of true spirituality. Listen to this. Listen, it won't take but a minute. Satan's first attack upon the human race was his sly effort to destroy Eve's confidence in the kindness and the goodness of God. Fortunately for her, Unfortunately for her and for us, he succeeded. Satan did too well. From that day, men have had a false conception of God, and it is exactly this that has cut out from under them the ground of righteousness and driven some of them to reckless and destructive living. Nothing twists and deforms the soul more than a low or unworthy conception of God. Certain sects, such as the Pharisees, while they held that God was stern and austere, yet managed to maintain a fairly high level of external, not internal, but external morality. And it was their lack of internal character that Jesus called them snakes, vipers, and hypocrites. And who has warned you, he told them, of the wrath of God that was to come on such hypocrisy. Listen to this. But they had a fairly high level of external morality. But their righteousness was only outward. Inwardly, they were whited sepulchers, unwashed, uh, whited tombstones, as our Lord Jesus told them, Matthew 23, 27. Their wrong conception of God resulted in a wrong idea of worship. To a Pharisee, the service of God was a bondage which he did not love, listen to this, but from which he could not escape without a loss too great to bear. Think about the people that dread coming to church. People, oh God, it's Sunday, I wish I could sleep in. Well, you've lost something. I get tired too. Come on. I have to get myself by the collar and say, get up, boy. It's time to worship. It's time to do God's will. Come on. If you don't run the flesh, it'll run you. If you don't govern your inner, uh, come on, inner and outward man, it'll govern you. Amen. Are you listening to me? Somebody say amen. Am I, am I boring you? Listen to this. Listen to this. So, the God of the Pharisee was not a God easy to live with. So his religion became grim and hard and loveless. It had to be so. For them, for our notion of God must always determine the quality of our religion. Much Christianity since the days of Christ's flesh has been grim and severe. And the cause has been the same, an unworthy or inadequate view of God. Instinctively, we try to be like our God, and if, he, and if he is conceived to be stern or exacting, so will we ourselves be. If we believe he's just a hard man, like the man that was given ten talents, another one was given five, and another one was given one, and when he came to receive fruit of that harvest from these that he had given talents to, one said, oh, Lord, see, he trusted God. He was excited about it. He said, oh, I've gained twice as much as what you gave me. Other one said, I've gained twice as much. And the other one that hid his talent in the ground said, said, I knew you were a hard and an austere man. You want to reap where you didn't sow. It's like a prayer I heard on Shenandoah by Jimmy Stewart one time at the table before he found God. You know what he said? He said, God, I, I thank you for this food, but we earned it. 
We worked for it, for it. We plowed, we planted, we worked for this. We had, and it was all our doing. He changed his tune when he lost two or three young uns and had to lean on God lest he break down with, and die with pain. From a failure properly to understand God comes a world of unhappiness among good Christians even today. The Christian's life is thought to be a glum, unrelieved, cross-carrying under the eye of a stern father who expects much and excuses nothing. Wait a minute, hold on a minute. He is austere, peevish, highly temperamental, and extremely hard to please. That's the way people, some people feel about the Lord that do not know that he's merciful and gracious and, and he pities us. Do you think when you, t you know, it's like the man one time, listen to this, that was the greatest worker among the, uh, the uh, ministry to the poor um, Pacific Guard Mission in, uh, in Chicago, Illinois. This wino was laying in the ditch, and one of the one of the workers come by and picked his head up out of the out of the gutter and kissed him. And he said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Nobody ever kissed me but my mother." He said, "Jesus told me to kiss you. God told me He loved you for me to kiss you." And that man that was kissed become the greatest worker in the Pacific Guard Mission. But listen to this. Listen to this. He said, man that kissed him said, you are drunk, aren't you? He said, shh, don't tell God I'm drunk. <laughs> like God didn't know he was drunk. You, do you think you're, you're sinning and coming short of the glory, child of God? Or, or, or saint of the Lord when you make mistake or sin against the Lord? Do you think that surprises God? He said, he forgive it. He continually forgives. Amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. They, people think he's austere, peevish, highly temperamental, and extremely hard to please. The kind of life which springs out of such a libelous, libelous notion must of necessity be of a parody on the true life in Christ. It is most important to our spiritual warfare that we hold in our minds always a right conception of God. If we think of him as cold and exacting, we shall find it impossible to love him. And our lives will be ridden with servant's fear. If again, we hold him to be kind and understanding, our whole inner life will mirror that idea. The truth is that God is the most winsome of all beings and his service one of unspeakable pleasure. Do you think this is work? I'm having fun. The, oh, listen, listen, I wish I could live in church. I thought sometime about getting me a cot, Miss Wanda, and putting it up in the altar and just saying, bye-bye, I'll see y'all next Sunday. It's so wonderful. Amen. Unspeakable pleasure is serving the Lord. He is all love, and those who trust him need never know anything but that love. He is just indeed, and he will not condone sin. But through the blood of the everlasting covenant, he is able to act toward us exactly as if we had never sinned. Toward the trusting sons of men, his mercy will always triumph over justice and judgment. The fellowship of God is delightful beyond all telling. He communes with his redeemed ones in an easy, uninhibited fellowship that's restful and healing to the soul. He is not sensitive or selfish or temperamental. What he is today we shall find him tomorrow and the next day and the next year. He's not hard to please, though he may be hard to satisfy. He expects of us only what he himself first supplied. He's quick to mark every simple effort to please him and just as quick to overlook imperfections when he knows we meant to do what is right. 
and do his will. Anybody getting a hold of this? Isn't that the God that you want to serve? Come on. What if the whole world, all of religion knew this? Think of this. I thought of this. Putting no religion, major religion of the world down. Put Not putting it down at all. But just listen to me. Think of it. All religions except Christianity are works related. You have to work, 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 work to please that God. That is not a God that is not. A God who has no eyes, a God who has no ears, a God who cannot touch, a God who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That's the God of all religions except the God of Christianity. And his name again is Jesus. How many of you getting anything out of this today? Well, brother, you, you this church works. Our pastors work. Our co-pastors, yeah, but we're not working to be saved. We're working because we are born again. We're not working to try to make uh, get brownie points with God. We're working because that's who we are, and that's what we do. Boy, I'm preaching better than you shouting. Think about it. He's... He's quick to mark every effort when we plead a uh, simple effort to please him and just as quick to overlook imperfection when he knows we went to do his will. He loves us for ourselves and values our love more than galaxies of all the created worlds around you. Oh, well, I could just go on and on. Listen, friends we are, listen to this. Their idea of God, of the elder son that had the prodigal son for a brother, their, their idea of God rules out the possibility of his being happy in his people. And they attribute to the singing and the shouting to just sheer fanaticism. Unhappy souls, these are, doomed to go heavenly on their melancholy way, grimly determined to do right if the heavens fall and to be on the winning side in the day of judgment. Always concern what's in it for me. How good it would be if we learned that God is easy to live with. He remembers our frame and knows that we are dust. He may sometimes chasten it. It's true. But even this he does with a smile, the proud, tender smile of a father who is bursting with pleasure over an, over an imperfect but promising son, her daughter, who is coming every day to look more and more like the one whose child they are. Amen. Halabashanta. Some of us are religiously jumpy and self conscious because we know that God sees our ever thought and is acquainted with all our ways. We need not be. God is some of all patience and the essence of kindly goodwill. We please him most, not by frantically trying to make ourselves good, but by throwing ourselves into his loving arms with all our imperfection and believing that he understands everything and loves us still. Give the Lord a praise. That's my king. Hey, woo, hallelujah. I said, that's my king. Glory to his name. That's my Savior. Yeah. I said, that's my Savior. Amen. Look at here. 